and welcome back to the Football Chat. The WSL season is about to get started. The 23-24 campaign starts this Saturday. So we're here doing our full table predictions. Very excited for the new season. Are you excited, Harry? I am excited. I mean, last year was a very competitive year. I mean, yeah. in the grand scheme of the things. most competitive year. We had a four-way fight for the title, which is very abnormal. Obviously, usually we see the big three, City, Chelsea, Arsenal. We saw United involved last season. We could see even more this season. So a lot to go through today, a lot to do in our table predictions. I'm pumped for the new season. I am, I am. And I think I'm particularly intrigued to see there's been a lot of new signings, a lot of different clubs. We've seen, you know, Rossi Russo's the big one. Then yeah. United had to replace it with Hesse. And or has uh, are we saying yeah, he's he's right, he's yeah. day, that's one. And you know, Aston Villa have signed a you know a lot of new players over the last two years. They've come on leaps and bounds. Yeah. You know, could they join the big four this year? Who knows? But it should be a good year. Yeah, indeed. Now we we are gonna go more in depth and talk about the WSL in a bit more depth on our podcast. If you want to go check that out, that is available on any audio platforms. Today though we're gonna focus on the more trivial stuff the all yeah. starting the season we're going to make some outrageous shouts all that kind of stuff if you want to see a more in-depth conversation head on over to our spotify link in the description so shall we start then with our first prediction of the season we're going to start and we're going to look at the signing of the season it's the player that we think has been signed this summer and that will have the biggest impact and at the end of the season everyone will be going that was the signing of the season I want to say, do you think that we've seen a lot more signings and a lot more rogue signings because of the World Cup? I think so. You know, there's a, there's a few players that have got their move because of that World Cup. I yeah. think, you know, Daphne Van Donsela, you know, is probably the biggest yeah. one. Well, Jimmy was just before the World Cup, obviously, but... Well, you know what I mean. He looked good at the World Cup. Um, I'd say Hinata Miyazawa was probably the best yeah. example moving to Manchester United. Probably wouldn't have got that move had she not absolutely torn, torn apart the no, World Cup. No. So I think we have seen quite a few moves because of the World Cup, and that has I'm sure that's going to have an impact. Who is your signing of the season, then? Who do you think we'll be looking back at I mean, as the best This deal? was tough, because as I said, there's been a lot of good deals. Yeah. I, I think a, you know, a high number of high-profile players joining the WSL. I went for Jill Rod, obviously joined Manchester City this summer. I'm really... I, I think she'll hit the ground running. I think she's a yeah, phenomenal Yeah, it's the player. most boring answer, isn't it? It is. It Saying really her is. or Russo is the most boring because you know they're going to yeah. do well. There's a yeah. there's a, almost a guarantee that they're going to do well because they're excellent, excellent players. Yeah, Raw's one of the best midfielders in the world right now. We saw yeah. at the World Cup how while Netherlands weren't strong, while they didn't they didn't really score many goals, when they did, it tended to be Jill, Jill Raw finding them. So... Yeah, I mean, she'll add a lot to that City team. The City team didn't really finish enough chances last season. I know Khadija Shaw scored an absolute yeah. <laughs> truckload. But other than that, they really f- struggled to find the find the net. So, Rod will add goals from midfield, and I think that will have a huge impact. Definitely. I've got a bit more rogue with my one. It's not two out there. I've gone for Chelsea's new signing, Catalina Macario. I think she's going to add a lot. On the good. wings, if you if you look at Chelsea last season, I think Gura Reitman's particularly impressive. I think James did well out there, but Kanarai didn't really do enough for me no. last season, and I, I feel like we needed something more in there. Macario adds exactly that—a really exciting wing, a fantastic dribbler, and can finish as well. I mean, the increased um, service to Sam Kerr, yeah. yes, please. I mean, she's joining a side as well that will give her the platform to show how good she is. Yeah, because exactly. I mean, I mean, well, I mean, she was at Leon before, which she was is the best. Well, but I think in terms world. of coming, you know, women's, you know, coming over to the Women's Super League to a Chelsea side that is won title after title. Yeah, there's a, there's a big. I I think she'll be really well. Do you think the Women's Super League is due sort of this big explosion? Because it's very all the top leagues across women's football at the moment are very level. Yeah. I would say it's, it seems to be quite a level playing field. Do you think we're due while the league exploding, similar to how the Premier League did in the nineties? I think so. I think so. And the Super League, you know, you'd probably expect that to maybe be the one, the one that, that will. So, yeah. I, th- I think it definitely has the potential to. I mean, the fact like you know, Jill Ward returns to WSL after going away to Germany. She decided to come back, and you know, these yeah. pla- these players that have done so well in other nations coming over, it's only a good thing. Yeah, I think, though, that the WSL does need some, well, someone to win the Champions League soon. Yeah. Because it has right. been way too long since since we've had an English side win. I fact, I think it was Arsenal in, like, 2008 or something like that, 2004 or some, yeah. sometime in the mid-2000s. So, yeah, definitely need to see a winner from England in the, champ, in the uh, UEFA Women's Champions League soon. 
Into the other predictions then, top goal scorer. Now, this one, there's a lot of options, obviously, all the top strikers in the league, or other more rogue options, of course. Who are you going for? I've gone for boring you again. I've gone the, 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 one of the easiest answers. I mean, obviously, Daly took it last year. She picked Shaw on the final day. I've obviously, Sam Kerr, we know how good she is, but I haven't gone for any of those. I've gone for Alessia Russo. Yeah. I feel like it's written in the stars, isn't it? She you know, got the move from United to Arsenal, and in that Arsenal team, I think she's going to have maximum service and she'll get maximum rewards because she, she's a brilliant player, and I think if this campaign just goes right for her. Like, you know, Daly's, Daly's year last year, it just went, she got all the service she needed and she took her chances. Yeah. Russo will do the same, and I think she will take it, but it will be close. My only thing with Alessia Russo is I don't know whether she starts every game. Because Arsenal still have Vivian Miedema, obviously, on the book. So once she's back from injury, you'd imagine there'll be some rotation there. I don't see where Russo fits in the starting eleven. Now, they could start her and bench Miedema. They could try and shoehorn both into the side, and that's probably what mm, they'll try yeah. at some point this season. But it does just feel like potentially there's going to be not as many minutes of Russo, especially given the fact that Arsenal are, of course, in Europe. Mm. I've gone for someone who I think will play every single match. I've gone for Rachel Daly. I yeah. think if she starts through the middle again for Aston Villa, she's the only one in the league that I would say is 100% nailed on every match. Yeah. Maybe Khadija Shaw, because City don't have a lot of backup in uh, in the striker position. So I think, for me, it makes sense that Daly will do it again. There's a reason she did it last year. It's because she doesn't get rotated much. If you look at Chelsea, Sam Kerr is, is our striker, and Kerr's a fantastic player, but I wouldn't say she's a high-volume scorer. No. She's a bit of a drogba in that sense. She's a big-game player, but... She's not going to go and pick up I mean, 20, yeah, 30 yeah. goals a season. And obviously, me too, obviously this year be a bit different. Obviously, last year, she rotated with Panina Harder. So, yeah. a daily makes sense. She's a sensible option. You know, it's like picking Erling Haaland. Again. I still think it's a rogue one, though. I, I, yeah. don't, I don't think it is like picking Erling Haaland. I feel like a lot of people will be backing Russo, the new signing. They'll be backing Jose Ferreira to hit the ground running at Manchester United. Was that a name that ever crossed your mind, Jose? Could you see her I doing did, well at United? I, was, I, I forgot. It wasn't until I it wasn't until I wrote Russo's name down that I thought, well, surely United have got to have a striker. <laughs> no, they're not playing and, one. <laughs> yeah, and then I eventually clocked on that. Obviously, they had to replace her. Yeah, could you see Hinata Miyazawa carrying her form from the World Cup because if she, if she scores two goals a game, ask. I think it's a big ass. It is, yeah, I agree there. But if she keeps up her form for the World Cup, then she's going to have to be the league. Yeah, no. Exactly. But yeah, and top assists then sort of goes hand in hand. They tend to be from the same team, but have you gone for someone someone different? I have gone for someone different. I, okay. I, I think Russo's one of those. And we saw the same, uh, the same with Daly last year, is that it didn't really matter who was giving, setting up, setting up, giving her the ball, she'd always score. If it's anyone, really, she can make yeah, a chance by herself. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I've gone for Guro Raiden. Yeah, There's, this is Fair she enough. is magnificent player. You know, she scores a lot of goals, but she'll put it on a plate for whoever's there. And when you've got players like we've just mentioned, like you know Sam, you know Sam Kerr and um, Lauren James, they're going to put away the chances that Guro Raiden gives them. Yeah, uh, fair I enough. think that's her best chance. 100%, 100% agree with you there. I think uh, Ryan's a magnificent player. I mean, that's, you'll probably see when we get into I mean, I mean, further discussing this. But it, it, yeah. it was hard to choose. You, know, you could have gone for one. You know, you got Hemp and Kelly. You've got you know even Kirsty Hansen at Villa got nine last year. I think Gura Ryan got eleven or twelve. Uh, yeah. I, I you know I'd expect the same amount of numbers, maybe even higher this year. Yeah, I mean you mentioned her there, but I've gone for Lauren Hemp. I think Manchester City last season were the best teams at creating chances. The problem is, if you create a chance and there's no one there to finish it, it's very difficult to score. Now, obviously, Khadija Shaw picked up a lot of goals, but other than that, City were really struggling to find to find the back of the net. As I say, Jill Ward coming in, I think she'll pick up a fair few. That's only going to increase numbers for the likes of Lauren Hemp and Chloe Kelly. It's between those two for me, and I decided to go for Lauren Hemp. I know she's tense, she likes to cut inside, she likes to have a shot, but she mm. can also take the ball, yeah. can get a ball into the box, and when you're cutting it, you can either cross it into Khadija Shaw or kind of back to Jill Ward. They're pretty decent options to try and yeah. find a goal yeah. with. So I think there's a very good chance Lauren Hemp could take the most assists in the league this season. We've gone. Shall we look at Golden Glove next then? The goalkeeper in the league that will keep the most clean sheets. This one was really difficult for me because I feel like you could go for any of the top teams. Any of the top yeah. five could keep the most clean sheets. But who'd you back to uh, to do it? Now, this was a tough one because I, th I think maybe the sensible option for everyone to go for would be Mary Earps. 
I mean, obviously phenomenal goalkeeper. But United, yeah. I think United have still got a bit of a way to go defensively. And obviously there's been a lot of kind of rumour around her position at Man United. And is she leaving? Is she staying? Does she want to leave? Does she want to Does she want to stay? So I felt it was a bit of a risky one. And then, you know, I think City again, not very well renowned for being defensive. Not, you know, Arsenal, they look good. I think the one team that have looked defensively solid is Chelsea. So I have got Anne Katrin Berger. No, I, I was going, there was a doubt true. in my mind over how they look defensively because they've lost Mag- Magdalene Eriksson and looking at Khadija Buchanan in the World Cup for Canada was pretty yeah, disappointing. Yeah, but Buchanan's still a very good player. She, she is a very good defender. I see Millie Bright back to full fitness. I, my complaint would be, I'm not sure that Anne Berger starts for Chelsea. I think, Zak- I think Zakira Muzovic takes number one shirt this season. I mean, we'll see on Sunday, obviously. And it's a big decision for Emma Hayes I'll to make. what I'll do then. I'll say, check one of Chelsea's goalkeepers. My, if, if they rotate throughout the season, does that lower their chance of getting Golden Glove? Oh, because there's Emma Hayes will, though. But they've got Hannah Hampton now as well. Oh, what? What's about a three with the goalkeeper? They, they've got five yeah. goalies at the club. Mm. One of the, They just loaned out Everard to Brighton. She could easily start for any side in the WSL. Chelsea's just hoarding goalkeepers at the minute. <laughs> I don't know what else could happen. Yeah, exactly. So I, I think Anne Katrine Berger will play back up this season. I I tell you, yeah, I think Musovic is I I I don't know. I just see it's Anthony Berger, but Musovic <laughs> looked brilliant, brilliant, absolutely brilliant for Sweden. So yeah. I will go. Whoever go, whoever, whoever Chelsea put in goal this year, will win the goal. All the Chelsea goalkeepers combined. Yes, <laughs> we'll do that. Fair enough. Fair enough. But on to oh no, sorry, I haven't done mine, have I? Yeah. Golden Glove. I've got Ellie Roebuck. I think. City tend to tend to dominate games. They don't yeah. concede as many silly goals. Chelsea last season conceded a lot of stupid goals and still came out on top because of their attacking prowess. I think that will be quite similar this season, especially, as you say, without Magdalena Eriksson in the side. I feel like we will still concede very stupid goals. Maybe. And then I think that Chelsea will be able to come back because we've got such a strong attack. So... I'm back in City. They do tend to take control of games more often. I mean, we watched the Chelsea City game live on stream last season. Yeah. That was a really good match. City winning 1-0 there, I believe. So showing there that they can, against the top sides, not concede a goal. Whereas I think when Chelsea beat sides, they do tend to concede at least one goal. Yeah. Against the top sides. Obviously against the likes of Leicester, West Ham, Bristol City, clubs like that. You'd, you'd expect clean sheets, but I think there's more chance to see. So I'm going to go for Ellie Roebuck. I think she's also a fantastic goalkeeper. If she brings back her form from the season before last I think she'll be sensational yeah because last right. season she wasn't on top form she brings back that form she's going to be very difficult yeah. to score pass yeah. on to the player of the season awards the player of the season and the young player of the season then obviously these are more difficult to judge because it's not a numerical thing it's not who scored the most goals it's who on who is people going to vote for at the end of the season as being the yeah. best players but We'll give it our shots to who we predict will get voted in. Player of the season, then. We'll start with player of the season. Harry, who do you think, I think is going to claim it? Usually it goes hand in hand with winning another award. So usually it's, maybe it could be your top goal scorer or yeah. your golden glove winner. I don't think I've, a goalkeeper win player of the season. No, <laughs> I've gone for who I put as the top assister. I've gone Giro Wrighton because I think, yeah. I mean, obviously we talked about how she's a magical player earlier, but her, you know, her goal contribution numbers are through the roof because you know, she does both. Yeah. And I, I fully expect double digits in both goals and assists this season. I think she has the ability to be one of the world's best on her day. And realistically, she, and she's consistent. I think she is one of the world's best. Yeah. I think you're doing a harsh there. I've also put Gary Ryan as player of the season because yeah. she's the best footballer in the world. And I don't care. You can disagree all you want in the comments. She is sensational. When she's at Absolutely her best, you play. can't stop Gary Ryan. No. 100%. And, well, I think as she should still get a load of minutes this season. Yeah. I mean, obviously, it would depend how deep Chelsea go you'd expect, in the WCL. You'd expect it to be a rotation between James, Canaride and... Um, Macario yeah. and Wrighton. So there is going to be a lot of competition for minutes. On top of that, you've got Mia Fischel coming into the side, who you don't will probably Guru rotate Wrighton. up front. You do not bench Guru Wrighton. For the big games, but I think against some of the smaller sides, we will see a little bit of rotation You don't there. bench Guru Wrighton. <laughs> I, yeah, it depends, I, as I say, it depends how deep Chelsea yeah. go in the UWCL. Hopefully, it's very deep. All the way. Ho- exactly. Hopefully, it's all the way. Young player of the season, then, who are you going for? Now, this is obviously, you could, this is a bit, I've got a bit of rogue on this one. Um, I think it's, it'll be interesting to say, usually it's probably from one of the big sides. I've gone for a slightly smaller, I've gone Katie Robinson from Brighton. Mm. Um, I think, obviously, she's got into England set up this year and was part of the England side that got to the 
got to the World Cup final. I think she's looked really good in some of the international friendlies we've seen her playing over the summer. And she had a really neat, you yeah. know, saying she's in a Brighton side that aren't the best. She had a decent year last year. I think she's just a really good player, and I I'd, I'd expect her to put up really good numbers despite maybe Brighton's poor league standing that we'd expect. Yeah, I mean, I hundred agree with you. I think she's going to have a really strong season. I just don't think she'll get voted though. I, I think well, I think, I think most I think fans yeah. will look back at the end of the season and go, oh, well, people who actually I mean, consume a lot of women's football will yeah. go, yeah, she had a really good campaign. But I think the voting's more likely to go oh, to yeah. one of the. I, one of the I watch you grow because the rest yeah, of my Richmond are really boring. I mean. She got nominated last year, Unless but unsurprisingly ab- lost to modern names. <laughs> well, exactly. Unless she absolutely tears the league apart, yeah. I just can't see her getting voted in over names like Lauren Jane. But I, I hope she has a season this year where she can get herself a big move. Yeah, I mean, she deserves it, especially... Even if it's outside the Super, um, Super League. Yeah. You know, go abroad to, you know, look at Barcelona or Bayern Munich. Yeah, it's a lot more common for our, our English female players to move abroad. We don't really see it in the men's game. I mean, That's Bellingham's right. like the only one. Kane. And Kane, and Kane, Kane now, left. yeah. So it's starting to happen more. But if you look at, obviously, the English players in the women's game, you've got players like Lucy Bronze that have moved abroad. Yeah. Been abroad for years now. Yeah. Kira Walsh obviously moved last summer to Barcelona. So it's not as Stanway, uncommon. Yeah, of course, Georgia Stanway uh, tearing up in the Bundesliga. Young player of the season, I've gone incredibly boring, but she is absolutely phenomenal. It's, of course, Lauren James, yeah. the best dribbler. It, arguably the best dribbler of women's football. I mean, that is a contentious statement. I, <laughs> I understand that, but... The way she moves with the ball at her feet is just a phenomenal, and I don't think there's anyone that's going to stop her. I almost put her in as as top assist or something like that because I feel like she's going to have a really yeah, good season. Yeah. But as we mentioned a lot, Chelsea have a lot of rotation in the side, so I don't think the minutes will be there. I think for the numbers. Uh, I think you know over last year, I think going into this year as well, she's you know really shown, you know she said that she wants to prove that point. She doesn't want to be in her brother's shadow yeah. for her whole footballing career. She wants to be known as Lauren James. She just needs to curb her attitude and temper a Not little bit at times. Yeah, but I think she is she is starting to become yeah. a lot more calm, <laughs> which is a positive That's sign. Good. And yeah, I'm a, I'm a big big fan of Lauren James. Shall we get into our full tail predictions yeah. then? Now, I yeah. will caveat this by saying we are not experts in women's football. I wouldn't say we do thoroughly enjoy consuming it. And we, I think we will be watching a lot more this season, mm. it's fair to say, especially after a very good World Cup. But if there is anything in here that you think that is horrendous, please feel free to get involved in the comments. Tell us that. We are Probably learning here as well. Lower half of the table. Yeah, I have to be honest. I was Googling Bristol City players. Like, who not, are I'm these? not an avid Leicester yeah. City women's, you know, women's fan. Exactly. We know the, the best players. Yeah. We know the big team. Teams, but with the lower sides we are sort of having a stab in the dark yeah. but we have done a bit of research so hopefully what we say isn't too far off so shall we start at the bottom of the table yeah because where else would we start the middle yeah, that'd yeah. be really start weird <laughs> yeah um we'll start at the bottom and i mean obviously there's only one relegation place so going straight back down up at bristol city now I knew you were going to do this, so I came prepared with a little bit of a fact for you. Did you know that since relegation promotion was added to the WSL in 2013-14, only one promoted side has been relegated? Who was that? Doncaster in 2016. So... I don't think they're going to change that, Bristol City. It's going to be two now. (laughs) Fair enough. I do think Bristol City are quite weak, and I think they're definitely going to be down there. I don't don't see them going down immediately. Why do you think they will? I just don't think they're good enough. I, I look at as I look at our teams down there, the likes of the Brightons, the Leicesters, the West Ham. Yeah. They've got up those one or two players that could change a game from. And you know this Bristol City side, they you know they got in Carey Jones on a free transfer, who was on the Leicester last year. She did all right, but wasn't really anything special. But obviously still very young, so it's a bit hard to judge. I think yeah. she's a good talent though. Loaning in um, Kayla McKeese from Arsenal or McKessie, something like that. Um, you know, good goalkeeper should do, but the volume of shots that she's going to face is be very hard to keep out. Yeah, I, I think with with regards to their squad, there's a lot of players in the team that I don't think get in any other team, and no. that is concerning. I would say they just they dart, they look like a very championship side. If they you do. look at their even their title fight last season, most of the teams that have come up from the championship in the last few years have dominated the league flown up the table and then got into the WSL and then they are competitive. With Bristol City, it was a very tight fight at the top of the championship. So coming into the WSL, I just don't I don't think they're going to be able to, to fight yeah, that hard. Yeah. I do think they'll set up, though. 
Fair enough. Who are you sending down then? I think it's going to be Leicester, and I don't really have much justification for them. Very good they point. are a very, they are very poor, a very poor squad. Mm. They are going to be down there, and it is just going to come to a matter of who can get the points when it matters, who can get over the line. And I think the spirit of the Bristol City side will get them those points, will get them those crucial wins in those in those crunch matches. So. Yeah, Leicester were very fortunate. I think without their manager, Willie Kirk, I think they would have struggled. Mm. They really would have struggled to stay in the league. So, I mean, he is still their manager, but I don't think he can pull off a miracle two years in a row. Okay. So, I think Leicester are, are in trouble this season. I'm putting them bottom. All right. I mean, I, I thought so. I put Leicester 11th. I think they'll just stay up by the skin of their teeth. Yeah. But again, I'm not expecting an enjoyable year for it's, Leicester. It seems to follow a very similar train of thought yeah. because in 11th, I've got Bristol City. Yeah. As I say, squad looks very championship. I don't think they're going to be pulling no. up any trees uh, anytime soon. I, I think it'll be between those two goes down, but I just put Bristol City because they're new. Yeah, it, it's really difficult to call. Yeah. As we said. The thing is, especially with these predictions, is there's not too much variation to have. No. In the Premier League, there's 20 teams. You can mix them all about. You can end up with Bournemouth 8th and... Aston Villa 17th or the other like, way around. It's kind but... of really mid-table. It is either you're in the title fight or you're in the relegation fight. <laughs> you're either going down or like, yeah. winning the league. <laughs> and it can change from one week to the next. Yeah, I, I think it does make the WSL a really interesting really yeah. interesting league to follow. So, yeah, I mean, we saw it last season. Tottenham were Tottenham almost got relegated. Yeah, I could easily see them being top half this season. Yeah. So, very hard to call. Well, it's the top 10 then already. It feels very crazy. <laughs> um, I've put Brighton 10th. Okay. Now I don't think they're incredible, but I think Katie Robinson will do enough to. Get I, th- in I think you're wrong here. I don't like. I don't. Brighton's business this summer has been impeccable. I don't think they're like rubbish. Like they're not Bristol City, but they're, I just. They're, they're, yeah, they're Forest Dotter. Do do you use them defensively? They're I, very good defensively. I think it's. Say. I think it's a good side. It is a good side. Maybe temp's a bit harsh, but as we said, you know. For me, I think Sip and Temp could all be in different positions for me. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. I mean, I'll get on to Brighton later, but I will just, I will say, well, I will interject here, they have just added Forrest Dotter on a free. They've just added Menwen Lee from PSG on a free and Carabali, who impressed for Ecuador it's at good. the World Cup. I think they've done a lot to improve their defence and obviously they just got Everard on loan from Chelsea. Mm. So if they can sure, I think that's their defence sured up. If they can find enough goals, I could see them being a lot higher up the table than 10th. Who do you put 10th I put West Ham. I, I think they were poor last season, mainly because their manager wasn't very good. They have now changed, changed manager. Whether that will change too much, I don't know. I don't think they're going to be... They're going to be in risk at risk of being relegated, yeah. but I don't see them going down. I think they'll just, just be ahead of Bristol City and Leicester. I think that fight at the bottom will be very close. West Ham will be able to just be ahead of that. They very much lack overall quality I don't think their squad's good enough to to really compete with a lot of teams but they do have enough individual quality that the odd result may well go their way if those individuals can shine yeah I'm in a similar boat up at West Ham ninth. Yeah. I think they are a pretty bang average season Mackenzie Arnold will probably get them out of well, trouble exactly. that, that's the individual well, quality yeah. you're talking about isn't it <laughs> I mean you know, it's, it's those type of games where they're being dominated she can make the save which keeps the game at 0-0 yeah. rather than losing 1-0 we saw that for Australia yeah when they got all the way to the semi final I think that'll be enough for them I think that'll be enough yeah, all the way to the semi-finals, just on <laughs> Mackenzie yeah. Arnold saving yeah. things, pretty much. But yeah, fair enough. I could I could see West Ham ninth, but I, yeah, I don't. I think they'll be in the tenth. Right. As for ninth, I've gone for Everton. I think they've they've done well to improve their side this summer. I just don't really see them pushing up the table all that much. They did bring in Arherne on loan from Manchester United, and I think that is a good move. They obviously added Piemonte as well, the striker coming in from the Serie A. If she can hit the ground running, then maybe that's a good shot. Yeah. But yeah, I, I'm not too sure she will. And then you've got uh, Justine. Justine, I'm going to struggle with this uh, name, but Van Van Havermeid, I believe is how you like say it. her name. Plays mid and midfield for Belgium. She definitely has a lot of steel in there. She's a real, really good midfielder. If she, they, they all have good seasons, then maybe Everton will push a little further up the league. But I think ninth is fairly good. Not really in serious danger of going down, but no. also not uh, not going to be winning the league anytime soon. Now, at uh, eighth, then, I've gone Liverpool. Ooh. And this uh, uh, this might be a bit low, but I, I don't know. I'm expecting a bit of a, a, bit of a drop for Liverpool. Uh, I mean, they, they've lost Katie Stengel. They've lost Katie Stengel last to year. Joining uh, Houston Dash or something oh, like that? The Gotham, oh, Gotham, Gotham yeah, that's City it. team. Gotham City, yeah. Batman. Um, but 
I, I just I don't think their squad's left there. You know, they've, they've got they've got all right. You know, Sophie Howe could do something. Well, I was going to mention. I, I could see her. She looked yeah. really decent at the I think World Cup. If you take Stengel out there, joint top goal scorers last year were Bo Kearns and um, Sherry Holland. You know, in the middle of the park, they could do something. I just don't think it's a very. I don't think it's like a, a well beat. It's not a very good team. You know, eight spit bang average. Yeah, I don't think they'll be too far ahead of. I've not put much higher than you yeah. have, but in eighth, I've got Brighton. I think their defensive changes, their defensive restructuring, is going to be enough to keep them in right. a good position because I think they can hold draws. I look at defence featuring Forrest Dutta Carabali. That's a fantastic and half partnership. And then obviously Men Wen Lee at right back as well. I can't remember who plays left back for them. Everard in goal. They've got enough there to to keep a fair few clean yeah. sheets this season. I think they could shock a few sides. I mean, I don't think I don't think they're going to be beating Chelsea anytime soon, but there's no reason to say that they can't pull off an upset. I mean, they play Everton in the opening game week. If they get three points there, mm. they're already putting themselves in a really strong position. And I think they've got, I mean, a fairly, fairly decent start for West Ham and then Tottenham. So a, a chance to really start the season strong if they can yeah, get a couple of yeah. sheets on the board, get some points on the board, I think they'll put themselves in a good position to to go from there. And then we don't talk about their their October and November because that is horrible for Brighton. But right. if they can get nine points in the early games, yeah. they might be able to face the Chelsea, Man United, Man City, Arsenal run right. with a little bit more confidence. Um, seventh, is it now? Seventh, yeah, seventh, yeah. Yeah. So I've gone Everton, I think... Yeah, it's, it's, it's similar. As I said, my my from six to ten could all swap around. Everton, I've just put a bit higher on the end of that. They've got some decent players. You know, Brosnan in goal. You know, she did decently for Ireland at the, at the World Cup. I think defensively, you know, Bjorn has looked really good for Sweden, and again, she's yeah. a very good player. I think you know, uh, Snoyce up front as well. Again, a good player who could just get enough goals to find them up the table further than they expect. But it, it's, you know, I think it'll be around that mid table. Yeah, I don't, I don't see them challenging for much. But they, I don't think they're really at risk of going down no. either. I mean, I put them in ninth, but I think they'll be, I think they'll be comfortably ahead of the drop. In seventh, I put Liverpool. So not only a place higher than you have. Yeah. I don't really see them doing a lot this season. They looked fine last year at times, but overall they didn't really have enough to fight the big sides. And I think they'll be in a tight battle for sixth with, uh, with one other side. Fair enough. Sick. I put Tottenham. That is the one other side, yeah. I mean, they've got Beth England. They would have been relegated last season. Yeah. 100% would have been relegated last season without Beth England. Or Beth could have England been. Over there, scored over, you know, scored double digits goals. and they, Yeah. I expect the same. Beth England is a phenomenal striker. I mean, is she an outside shot of the Golden Boot? Maybe, because yeah. speaking of, when we were talking about how, how we look at it and look at who we could think could win it, saying it needs to be as someone who is very much dependent on for goals, there is none out there yeah, no. more dependent on than Beth England. So she's definitely an outside shot for, for that golden boot with a full not, season I think for the starting minute. With her firing, Tottenham finished sick. Without, if she doesn't hit the ground running, they could be in trouble. I was going to say, yeah, they may well yeah. struggle. Top trash window for them hasn't really yielded no. a lot. I mean, I was looking through their new signings, nothing that jumped out at me so yeah I feel like they are going to have to rely again heavily on Beth Beth England so it will yeah, be interesting it will be fifth I've got Aston Villa now this was a this top five was really I wanted to put Villa higher I just could I just I think they'll be I I, I think they'll definitely up there they'll be on the same amount of points as the top four I just don't know if they'll break into it I mean it's a brilliant Aston Villa side Brilliant Aston Villa side. Also, we talked about Rachel Daly. We talked yeah. about the likes of Kersey Hansen. But they've brought in Van Don Salar. You know, I think, you know, Kendra Darley, Nob, Staniforth, Bling, you know, uh, Laura Blinkilda got you know, nominated for Young Player of the Season last year. You know, Leon Daly, Lehman, Lehman, you know, it's Kersey Hansen. It's a brilliant team. Yeah, it's very strong. Defensively, I do have a few questions, but I think Van Don Salar's good enough and Pacheco in that back four. It's good. Enough. It's a really good side. I'm expecting a really strong season for Villa. Yeah, fair enough. I've got Villa higher, which is interesting. I thought Ooh. you'd have Villa winning the league or something no. because you were very much on board the Villa hype train last season. Fifth, I'm going to go for Manchester United. I feel like last season was an anomaly. I don't think they'll be able to fight no. right up at, at the sharp end again, especially considering how much damage their squad has taken from the transfer window. I think they've had a really poor window. I think I feel like they definitely need one more signing before before the window ends. 
They have to go and find... They need some sort of superstar. They need yeah. an Ari Borges, a Linda Caicedo. I don't know. Just someone that's going to really excite fans and, and and make it seem like United may well challenge. I mean, you've, they've lost Alessia Russo. Replacing her with Hesse is fine, but that is a downgrade. Yes, and I don't actually... I don't think Hesse Ferreira is that strong a player. I mean, at Barcelona, she didn't even put up the most stunning no. numbers, and that's at Barcelona. No. So, and while I admit she may not be the focal point of the team there, I just don't see her having an incredible campaign for United. No. I feel like she she may well struggle, and I don't see her as the ideal replacement for Russo either. So, yeah, it's a, it's a weird one for me. United seem to have downgraded over this window. I also don't think they've adequately replaced Ona Battler. I mean, how you can lose her and not really bring in anyone of the sim of a similar quality is is beyond me. They've also lost uh, Leon. Ariana Leon, I believe, yeah. is her first name. Oh, and yeah, I yes, on that. Can't, but I, I mean, their window's so weird. Yeah. They, they did get uh, Hinata Miyazawa, which I think is a, a fun transfer. Yeah. But it does scream World Cup wonder. A James Rodriguez type signing, someone that has a great World Cup, then you go and throw loads of money at them and then hope that she performs. But I, just, I don't know. And we don't know whether Hinata Miyazawa will be what they need. So... In that regard, United could be in a little bit of a little bit of trouble. I definitely think they could take a bit of a nosedive. Yeah. Well, here says so she's a free agent. She has she does with Man United. Okay. Fair enough. I would imagine it's, in their squad list. it's probably more likely that Footmob haven't yeah, updated sure. their squads than that Man United have forgotten yeah. they've signed. You know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm in the same boat with Manchester United. I've I've put them fourth. I think. Yeah. They got, that's decent side. I think that's a strong defender. You've got Letitia in there still. You've got Rivier yeah. and Blundell. Earps in goal is still very good. But, but that's if Earps Where's playing. her head? Exactly, where's her head she, at? She's still pushing for a move away. Yeah. If she gets that, and United then, will be scrambling for a keeper in the last week of the Or week. they're playing their only other goalkeeper, which is Safia Middleton Patel, who's 19 years old. That's not ideal, is it? I think Martin has got a real problem on his hands for, for Manchester United. Yeah, I, I think either whatever happens, fourth or fifth is going to be a good fight between yeah. uh, Aston Villa and Man United. I've yeah. put Villa fourth. It's really, as I say, a bit of a coin flip there, a bit of a dice roll. If you're not, if Villa's new signings come in, they bed in quickly. I think if Van Domselaar can have the desired effect as well, then they've got a really strong team there. It's just about whether they can whether they can start winning on a more consistent basis, yeah. actually challenge some I of mean, the top sides in the WSL. This test would be they face each other off on the opening weekend of the WSL, yeah. so that will be an interesting test to see who can land the first I'm sure we'll be watching that in, with, a, with yeah. a lot of intrigue because I, I couldn't call that. No. Could not call no. that game. But yeah, should be a good one. I can't really see Villa being able to push to the top three just yet. No. I think the big three are to go back to going to break away again. But yeah, I, I don't... I, I still think that Villa can get that fourth position. Yeah. On to that top three then. We've got the same top three, as in they're the same three teams. Are yeah. they in the same order? Well, Harry, who have you put as third? I've put Manchester City. Oh, I have not. I think... I don't think they're going to break into that top two. I, I, It's a good squad. They've had a decent window. It is a... What, what's there to say? They're a very good team. Do I think they're as good as the other two? Probably not. But I might have proved wrong in the second game of the season. Manchester City-Chelsea, big game yeah. now. I think that will say... I believe we may well time. be live for it. Maybe. So uh, yeah, we are. 30 on a Join us for that. If you don't know, we do live watch lines. We're live for the yeah. Chelsea season opener against Tottenham, and then we're also live for Manchester City versus Chelsea in the second game. We saw but a I load mean, of streams coming up. They haven't won the WSL since that uh, only win in 2016. I think they'll have to wait another year. Okay, fair enough. I don't think they're winning it either, but I've not got them third. So you can already start to predict who our foot's up. Yeah. Third, I've got Arsenal. They've got a lot of injuries already going into the season. Mead faces a, a bit of a rush to get back. The same for, for Mia Dima. I don't think she's going to make the first game week. And Lair Williamson still isn't back to full fitness either. So they've, they've got a few problems there. I know Mia Dima may not be as big an issue because they've got Alessia Russo, yeah. but... I still think you're going to want you you want strikers in there. You, you're going to want your best players. Mead, Williamson, Midium, they're all big misses. For me, that is going to have that is going to have an impact. Yeah. So yeah, second, who have you put? We did the second first, we did top. Oh, we'll do top then. Yeah, we'll see, isn't it? <laughs> well, that's not. Uh, there's no point being dramatic about it. They yeah. look brilliant, and they should win their seventh WSL. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I, I think it must be more than that. I think it's, it's might be seven. 
Or is it, or is it they'll have won seven or they're going to win. They could win seven this year. No, um, I can't remember. But they've had a... They yeah, either really way, it will be the fourth consecutive. Yeah. They're, they're mental. It's a really strong squad and it is only getting better. I was going to say they look stronger than ever. They've just added yeah. Katarina Macario. Thought, they've added Mia Fisher. Oh, they've lost. Ashley Lauren. They've lost Harder and and um, Ericsson. Maybe a bit of snow. Not happening. I say I think given the fact that Harder was out injured yeah. most of the season anyway, I think Fisher will replace exactly what you have from Fanila Harder, and she's just a much younger, yeah. much younger and version. They look solid even without Michael and Ericsson. Yeah. It should be a really good year for Chelsea. I think they'll be pushed all the way by Arsenal though. But again, you know, Arsenal, similar to Manchester City, haven't won it since eighteen nineteen. Yeah, they're going to have to wait another year. But I think they'll push Chelsea all the way, especially if, if Russo can get firing when Mead and Miedema get back. And overall, it's a good side. I mean, they haven't got Champions League to focus on, so they're fully focused on their domestic campaign. Yeah, of course. I mean, obviously with the FA Cup and League Cup, but you know that was disappointing in terms of getting knocked out in the Champions League quali- you know, qualification. Didn't make it the proper thing. What Arsenal, yeah. That'll be disappointing. They want to prove a point. I don't think Chelsea will let them though. Yeah, fair enough. I uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think City are going to win. I put City second. I think they've, they've got a really good side, but uh, yeah. but I think that second or them. third is similar. Mind it's yeah. a coin flip. Like fourth and fifth is. Like well, I think I still think the top is. three will be separated by just a handful of points. But I think the difference is when when it comes down to those small differences, Chelsea it's just Emma need Hayes to Chelsea. always have that edge. And I don't it. see Chelsea not win the league title unless their whole squad leaves or Emma Hayes leaves. I mean, there's always a possibility because dynasties have to come to an end yeah. at some point. Well, but ten of the year has come I to don't, an end. That went well. <laughs> I don't see it. I don't see it happening just yet. I th- and I think if it does, it will be at the hands of a brilliant, you know, side of that Arsenal team. You know, they'd have to have a one hit wonder of a season, or City could do yeah. something. Yeah. Uh, exactly that that's everything for today as yeah. we mentioned we are live this weekend for Chelsea versus Tottenham so join us on Sunday for that it's our first obviously our first WSL game of the season we couldn't have done the others they've not had any played yet but yeah we will be covering a lot of the WSL on our channel this yeah. season we didn't really do many streams last year we did our first one earlier this year and obviously we covered a game every single day of the Women's World Cup so yeah we have watched a fair, fair bit of women's football we're trying to increase the amount that we watch on this channel so yeah if you are a massive fan of the women's game then make sure to leave us leave a like subscribe yeah. and get involved in the comments below leave your predictions uh, we'd appreciate that massively that is everything for today as I say if you want to listen to us talk a little bit more about the about the WSL season coming up uh, podcast will be available on Spotify we're going to have a brief conversation or more of an, sorry a bit more of an in-depth conversation as part of our brief podcast and, <laughs> yeah and if you want to if you want to watch that on YouTube then uh, feel free to become a member it's 99p a month massively helps us out that is everything for today thank you guys very very much for watching and we'll see you next time see ya